The next two challenges are Crypto Provably Secure and Crypto Provably Secure 2. Uh, these, both of these challenges are by uh, JYU. It says, I proved this cryptographic combiner to be super secure, specifically INDCCA2, on my graduate crypto final exam. But just to be safe, I'm making you break it with both primitives being computationally secure, and we're given a netcap port. And for the second one, it says, now with less cheese, still pretty simple. Uh, and for both of these, we're given a server.py. Uh, I solved these pretty late in the challenge. I, I'm not familiar with this word, and it, it seemed pretty uh, complex for a you know graduate cryptography final exam. Uh, so I was a little bit afraid to even try, but then I saw it had 237 solves, so I figured it couldn't be too bad. Um, and thankfully, at least the first one was uh, pretty easy. Um, this is the server script we're given. So um, it says normally you have unlimited encryptions and decryption query requests in the IND CCA2 game. So I did Google this. It looks like it's like yeah, ciphertext indistinguishability. So I guess the idea is that you shouldn't you shouldn't be able to infer anything from the ciphertext. And so the game here is we're going to encrypt two different messages and we should not be able to guess which message was actually encrypted. Um, or we're going to give the server two messages. The server is going to encrypt one of them, give us back the ciphertext, and we don't know which one was actually encrypted and we have to guess. Um, so there were two versions. The first one, I think, maybe I'm misunderstanding, but I think it was broken, uh, which is why there was the cheese thing. Um, we'll see later there's like this scene ciphertext thing and it doesn't work. And so because of that, we can do like the most naive basic thing possible and it does work, um, which we'll talk about. And then the second one, we actually have to be a little bit more clever, but it still really isn't too bad. Anyways, uh, looking at the code, so there's three functions, or there's three things. There's the main function, then there's this encrypt and decrypt function. Um, I'm actually, let's just run it. Uh, Python 3 server. So uh, it gives us three options. We can either do the encryption or do the decryption. And it gives us this PK0 and PK1. And so we get to pick one of them. Our end goal is to hit, and there's 128 rounds. Oh, let me make this bigger, sorry. Um, if we, our end goal is to do the solve thing and we have to guess what this bit is. And the bit's either zero or one. And if we get it wrong, obviously it quits. So we need to guess it correctly 128 times. So obviously that's outside of the realm of just pure guessing. Um, but, you know, eventually you get it wrong or you get it right every once in a while. Uh, doo -doo. Oh, well, that's <laughs> three in a row that's wrong. Uh, wow. This time I'm going to do one it's going to be wrong. Wow. <laughs> anyway, uh, okay. Okay, I give up. Um, apparently I'm not lucky today. But anyways, um, so when we ask to do an encryption, um, we have to give it two messages and they're supposed to be 16 bytes of hex string. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Oops. And the second one, one, two, three, four, actually just line up. Sweet. And so we get back this, there's actually somewhere in the middle, it's split. So this is the ciphertext, um, sorry, the server is going to pick one of them and then encrypt something and then encrypt another thing. But it's only going to pick one of them and it doesn't tell us which one it picked. Um, and we can see that here. So this is the encrypt one. So like I said, it's going to pick two ciphertext. And then depending on which uh, this m bit, the thing that we're supposed to guess, it's going to pick a message and then run this encryption thing and give us the ciphertext. So the encryption function is a little bit interesting. It's going to take this generate 16 bytes of randomness and XOR with whatever message it picked. Then it's going to encrypt that R, and this is a public key encryption using RSA. It's going to encrypt that random thing, and the second time it's going to encrypt the XOR of our uh, random and our message. And then we're going to get the ciphertext for both of them. And the decrypt function um, is going to do the exact opposite of this. So it's going to take the ciphertext, it's going to split them into the two functions, and then it's going to decrypt the R, so that R0, and then it's going to decrypt uh, that this one right here. And so what you're going to be left with is just R uh, XOR. You're left with R and R XOR message. And so if you XOR these two things together, which they're doing down here, all you're going to do is get back message. Um, so everything works. Uh, like I said, it, it, there's that random bit that we need to guess, and the random bit is what picks what message they actually use. 
and we can also do decryptions. Um, and so we just give it the ciphertext of 512 and it'll spit back the message. So like I said, this first challenge, I don't know if it was broken or maybe this was just like helping us get the scaffolding set up, but this scene CT thing didn't work. So obviously if you can send an encryption and then decrypt it, you can see what message it picked and you know uh, what the mbit is because you can see which message was encrypted. And for some reason, I think uh, it was supposed to be like dot hex or something like that. Um, it was missing that, and so the scene CT thing wasn't working. So you could ask it to encrypt a message, and then just decrypt the message, and you can see which one it picked. And so that's all the solve script does. Um, here's the solve script. Uh, let's run it locally first. Um, it'll read in these two public keys, which we don't need for this one. And then it'll do the encryption function. So it's just going to send over M0, send over M1, get the ciphertext. It'll do the decryption function. So it'll request for a decryption. And then it'll send the ciphertext and it'll get back the original message. And this is the submit function where we say if it's either 0 or 1. And like I said, uh, since it's broken, well, all we're going to do is we're going to encrypt uh, two messages. The first message we're going to send all Fs. And the second message we're going to send all Es. So we send it to encrypt. We get the ciphertext back. Then we're going to decrypt that ciphertext, and either it's all Fs or it's all Es. So like, it's really just giving us the answer, and then we just submit 0 or 1, and it'll print out the, uh, um, yeah, it'll just print out the flag. Actually, we can just run this remotely. I think it does take a second, though. Doo -doo -doo, Python 3 solve. Let's see if it's still live. It's live. Um, it's going super slow, but it's there. Um, we can move on to the next one while it's going in the background. CTF, dice, uh, crypto, probably, probably two, and then code. So we'll let that run in the background. The only difference between this one and the other solve script, or sorry, the other uh, server file, was now they correctly do that dot hex in the scene CT list. Uh, where is it? This one. Oh, this is the call. This is where you they add the dot hex. So this is the only change in the uh, the entire file. And so what's happening here is now scene CT is correctly working. So we can't just naively do our, or like sneakily do our encrypt to decrypt thing. Um, we're not allowed to decrypt ciphertext that we already generated using this function. So um, we have to be a little bit more clever. And I think the trick, I think there's a couple different tricks, uh, but the trick I used was, uh, this is a RSA function and we're given the public key, the n, sorry, the n of the public key, and here is e, and if we have e and we have n, we have everything we need to, de or sorry, encrypt our own messages. We can't decrypt anything because we don't have a private key, but if we have the public key, we can encrypt anything. And so we can start encrypting interesting things that will help us decode. So once you know that you can encrypt arbitrary stuff, um, here's the solve script. So yeah, this is, I call a function do offline encryption, uh, given the n that's parsed from the input and that e. Um, once we know we can do offline encryption, uh, it's just doing some XOR magic to massage things into a format that gives you information. Um, cool. And the first one uh, finished. It says, yeah, I lost like 10 points on that proof. Uh, Lamo. So, sweet. So that was the first one. Probably two. Let's see if I can do... I might have uh, modified it slightly. Uh, yeah, so I have two log statements, ignore that. But like I said, the only change was this in CT hex, which looks like it's just a fix. Cool, so like I said, um, we can do offline encryption with the RSA. And so because of that, that won't go into the scene CT list. And we can use that to be a little bit more clever with stuff. Um, so this is the solve script, it starts the same. We're going to grab the public keys. Um, we're going to encrypt a message of, instead of E's and F's, I'm doing A's and B's this time. So all A's and all B's are my messages. The encrypt function is going to return some ciphertext. Again, I don't know which one it is, but if we remember the ciphertext, there's two encryption things. So if we if we go back up, sorry, may, I should probably specify this. There's PK0 and PK1. So there's two different public and private keys being used. Um, it's not the same one, which is something to keep in mind. So this encrypt function, what it's going to return is it's going to return some arbitrary message, but it's going to return XOR plus e2mxorr. So it's going to use the first encryption, the RSA encryption, and encrypt r, which is that random 16-byte number. And then e2 is going to pick one of the m's. We don't know which one. 
and then xsort with r, that random number, and return both of these. Cool. So the, the method that I used for doing this is, um, so I encrypted the ciphertext. Then I'm going to do an offline encryption. So encrypt just on my computer, uh, zero. Uh, actually, I should do null bytes, actually, now that I think about it, but it doesn't matter. Um, with pk1, uh, which is actually the second encryption, because there's pk0 and pk1. So what I'm going to do is generate, uh, sorry, this will generate d2, sorry, e2 of zero. Technically, it's character zero, but it doesn't matter. So I have this and this, and what I'm going to do is replace this one with this one right here. So when I ask for the decryption, all I'm going to get back is R, because it's going to decrypt this one, decrypt this one, and then XOR them together. And so that's R and zero, again, it's zero character, not the null, which I should be using, but it doesn't really matter. And so really, I'm going to get back R. Cool. So that's step one, is calculating R. And then I print it out here, R1. And that's where I was printing R1 out here, just to make sure the step worked correctly offline. Cool. Now that I know what R is, we can move on to step two. So in step two, we're going to do another offline encryption of R1 plus M1. Cool. So I'm going to say, I'm going to just make a guess, and I'm going to say, I think that the first, it actually encrypted M1. And so M1 was all A's. And so I'm just asserting that it actually encrypted M1, and we're going to see if that's correct or not. And so I uh, generate the R1, M1, since I already have R1 that I got here, and I know what M1 is, I can just XOR those together. And then I'm going to do an offline encryption and generate the encryption of R1 plus M1. Uh, offline, and this is E1. The, the first encryption function. Then, okay, so now that I have this, uh, what I'll do is I'll encrypt, um, you can kind of see it here, but I'm going to take the, the thing I just generated and I'm going to XOR with the ciphertext I got from the remote server for what they said R1 plus M is. And if they actually did pick M1, they should be the same, in which case uh, the response will be zero because we're XORing the same thing because it should be R1 plus M1, XOR with R1 plus M1, and so uh, the XOR two of the same things is just zero. Um, and if I'm wrong, then it'll be Bs, or it'll be one one byte above, or one bit above that, um, and I'll get back this message. Or some, uh, sorry, I shouldn't say that. It won't be zero, is all we can say. Um, anyways, so like I said, so we get back uh, the, we call the decrypt function on the R offline encryption and the ciphertext from the original uh, encryption that we did. And if it's zeros, um, we know that the message was M1. And if it's not zero, um, it just turns out to be one. Then we know that it was actually using M2. Um, so we can run this, Python 3, solve. Um, this is also going to take a while now that I think about it. Um, I'm just going to pause the video until it's done. Sweet. And it finished. It says, Dice, my professor would not be proud of me. So, like I said, the only real trick for this one was realizing you could do an offline encrypt, and then from there it's just a bunch of XOR magic. Um, I feel bad about doing this XOR magic on a video. Um, I feel like it never really... Personally, I never really uh, follow along when people try to explain this stuff. I feel like the only real way to actually understand is just doing it yourself, but... I guess as long as you understand the ideas, um, you can apply it on the next CTF, but if you really want to understand it, I'd highly recommend just kind of sitting down with a piece of paper and going through the math, because it's not terrible. And as long as you know you can, you have that offline encrypt gadget, um, it, it should be a, not too bad of a challenge. But anyways, thanks. See ya.